to my channel so today's video i'm going to talk about the timing reports for the for the input and output uh, we look at sample timing report that is generated by chat gpt for uh, explanation purpose um, and then we will also look into a feed through timing path at this path i haven't touched so we'll describe that and also look into timing report of a feed through path okay so first let's look into input path by the way previous video or previous few videos were on this one we will look at the launch and capture um, the concepts are very simple time report is going to be very simple so if you look at um, start point is now a port input port as opposed to flip-flop end point is a deep in so which is similar this path group again the capture is on this clock so it's called this it belongs to that path group and we talked in detail about uh, what are path groups it's a setup okay now this path that starts at input I, if you remember i explained that i don't have that picture right now in my previous video i explained in detail what is an input path and there's an output delay and there's a virtual clock that is associated with that uh, input delay okay so this is this is exactly the case here so this is that virtual clock so i just when i define this clock i put a v on in it just to show that it's a virtual clock but this was the this was the name that is created when i use create clock dash name again all this is in previous videos if this is the first time you're watching uh, a video from my channel so then we have input delay yeah for some reason when i ask it to do a double digit it didn't do double digit but it's just a two picosecond input delay okay and then input the transition time I applied with set input transition is 60 picosecond and rest is same it has different uh, points and we already talked about in the first video. So finally the arrival time is 37 picosecond. On the capture side, this clock has a period of 1000 picosecond. Everything else on the capture is very similar to the previous video. And keep in mind that there are few wrong things by chat GPT here. So you need to calculate uh, new record time and slack. That would be your homework. But it's very similar to the previous one so if you now move on to the output path again output a path which goes to which leaves your chip or which leave your block and goes into the another block and i already discussed that what is a virtual clock what io delay we used and and we set a load and all, all that in previous video here i'm just showing you a timing path so it starts at ideally this should start at ck clock pin of the flop and endpoint is our output port path group now this should put in v path group again is wrong chat gpt 40 didn't do good job on generating timing reports okay now your launch is an actual clock actual clock that exists inside your design and network delay is zero we know why um, this is the transition time coming inside which we had set with set input transition on ck pin because it's, a, it's an ideal clock there's no clock tree here rest of the stuff is same all the way to the deep pin okay again um chat gpt made a mistake this is actually part of the capture okay just remember that on on the input side input delay is part of the launch but the output delay is is typically put in on the capture side somewhere here so what happens is basically if you have a period your input delay is what two picosecond is, is subtracted from this okay what is sorry 998 and then you have hold uh, why is generated hold time sorry this should be set a time so many mistakes okay so set up time let's say is okay so i think if you remember that um if you let me go back anyway so 
all this game previously but sometimes what happens is people first time opening it this was the output path so remember that uh, required time is uh, period minus the external delay which i just showed you there there is a setup time which is also since this part is not visible to you so you don't know what is setup time so typically what we put is setup and external delay will lump sum as one delay and that is applied as set output i don't know why i missed that output delay whatever the value is and you put clock and this whatever we clock we define this clock virtual clock here i just gave it this name here <laughs> okay so it's but in 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 the in the timing board i was mentioning this clock so hopefully it is clear is not confusing okay um so our output delay which is connected to this board contains the delay from here 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 that's the sample one here all the way and the setup as well so together that number is the output delay and which is mentioned here so, all right so there's no need for additional setup time i forgot that completely um so of course no whole time this whole thing is uh, the entire setup and the actual delay this is actually setup and delay and this is applied on the capture side not on line side and you know that this two picosecond is should not be there it should be like maybe 100 picosecond or well, depends on the delay right but it's not that small okay that's good hopefully that's clear sorry if there's a little bit of mess by chat gpt here and there but my plan is i will start uh, into open source tools um and once we have an open source tool we start using that and then it will be a proper timing path and be more clear as i always say a lot of these things that we um, i'm giving you a theory if you don't understand it's okay uh, because the real understanding on comes when you actually do things and we will do things later on the final path okay we talked about input we talk about output and we talk about flop to flop this is a fourth type which normally comes in a block uh, and that is called feed through means the input comes it's not flopped anywhere and it just goes to the output now you probably be thinking why that happens um i mean it can happen for some functional reason but typically what happens is um so your floor plan at the top level let me get this one and this one let me where is all right let me draw here so let's say this is your die chip you put a block here and you really want to put another block let's say block is a block of logic that you call partition which you are synthesizing and place and routing them and there is block three so actually what happens is if you look at logical connection um, block one mostly talk to block two let's say 100 signal but it has also talked to block three maybe let's say 10 signals but it also talked to block four block five block six and these are major interfaces it looks like some buses going between them right 100 bits 100 bits 100 bits so what you do is um, block one you put block two here uh, then you put block four because there are a lot of signals you want to put right beside six and five and these are big designs so they they cannot be like part of the design so typically they need a lot of signals so they need this much area they need this much or uh, this much width or length and now the problem comes that you have to this block is talking to this block so there are two type of designs in full chip floor plan 
um, the this the one I'm talking about is an abutted design like it's not like you have one block there's another block and this block stuck to another block but there is some logic here and there and gaze or some other stuff I'm not, I'm not talking about the right now let's not talk about a full what kind of different techniques and maybe it's, it's a good topic for some other video but my, the point i'm trying to make here is this design you're talking about a butted everything about there is no top level channel every block aborts another the whole method is you don't do anything top level all you do is just integrate these blocks once these blocks are done this is done and you just pull them in your top level and they should be correct by construction but the problem here is if this block with the reason i'm for feed through is talking to this block now it's it's not connected here maybe block two is connected to block seven here so then block one has no way to talk to this block this block so what you do is you you try to make signal pass through this so for block two these signals are just feeding through isn't they not consumes inside All right so this is a one case of where feed throughs can happen with these are called um physical feed throughs they don't like in rtl you don't have it but we create a physical wrapper around this there are pros and cons of this approach let's not go there um but that those can be the parts and typically they do exist in in several designs so how do you constrain them well you can constrain them in the same way treat this side as input path type treat this thing as output type so this will have input delay this will have output delay this will have virtual clock this will have virtual clock and that will result in um what happened here okay sorry sorry um the timing report is over here actually uh yes yeah, so you apply input delay output delay input virtual clock upper virtual clock and then some you have something like this your start point is into output is out to this is into out to okay and then this is wrong these are both are virtual clock so launch is on this launch edge is zero it's just like an input input path all the way here again this is not correct this this thing is gets applied here so you kind of see both input and output delay types are in one timing path this, this correct incorrect as well okay and this clock is virtual as well that's correct so it between virtual to virtual input delay and output delay that's the same another way you can constrain this type of timing path is in uh, and that probably a simpler one what you can say there is another command in in tools as a constraint you can mention is called set max delay what kind of maximum delay you expect this feed through maybe this signal is traveling 500 micron and in order there, there is a delay on this here there's a delay on this here and and this area needs to be as fast as possible so it cannot if it's cover certain distance and it's on certain metal layers it cannot be too less but you know give it a realistic constraint set max delay and let's say 300 picosecond you say from and get port into to get port so once you apply this then your timing report looks a bit like this yeah so this is path group is different now it's called i think this is correct max delay you're into to out to nothing fancy here on clocks so that's it's simpler no clocks involved and all you have to do is 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 your 300 picosecond is your max delay constraint your arrival time is 93 right so you have a positive slack of 207 so this is another way you constrain 
So anyway, I think the basic understanding, you should have a basic understanding right now what the, on, on these type of timing paths and how these, uh, how to check whether these are constrained or not. And when these are constrained, then they should appear as proper timing report in your timing report. Um, then I give you example how you can read a timing report. Okay. I think this concludes this, this timing constraining and timing report analysis. On the next one, we will start looking into clock, clock distribution network, clock definition, multiple class, clock exception, and all that kind of stuff, uh, fun stuff. All right, see you next time. Thank you. Bye.